Morning folks, welcome along to the vlog. Shall we put some light on the situation? So as you can see, it's still quite a mess in here. And I nearly didn't do a video this morning, but I've decided to pull the phone out of my pocket and we'll just have a quick recap as to where we are and what's happening. I'm still waiting for a lot of deliveries to arrive to get certain projects finished, such as the drill press. And then other things have come and tested me over the past couple of days. So we had a temp controller, one of these ID974 Eliwell temp controllers. This is the case. Uh, one of the guys in the kitchen spilt some liquids and it ran down the front of our fridge and got into the controller and it blew some tracks, unfortunately. But on the plus side, actually, believe it or not, and you probably can, had one of these in stock, so I was able to just change it out like for like. I've been up this morning and checked it, and it seems to be working perfectly fine. And then, off the back of that, lo and behold, just as I'd repaired this, um, I discovered that one of these pumps in the cellar wasn't working for the cask beer line Python cooler. And in fact, it was just a small uh, matter of repositioning where the um, impellers are because I'd taken it apart to service it last week and then I tested the capacitor and the capacitor's about 25% out of spec so I'm going to get some um, 3 microfarad capacitors for these and we'll keep them in stock and then also one of these on my glycol recirc in the corner over here wasn't working that was just a small case of a relay, so we fixed that one. And then we've also put some um, inhibitor in there because they felt a bit slimy, so we'll stop anything growing and it'll prevent any rust or anything like that or any corrosion of the copper pipe work. And while I'm doing all this, and we also had a Buffy style thing going on in the pub yesterday for somebody's birthday, somebody's 50th, what should happen when we're absolutely stacked out? Yes, of course we get a food hygiene inspection. So, uh, yeah, EHO officer turned up. I better not show you his telephone. Oh, it makes no difference, really, to be honest. I'll probably blank this out, so I'll just be careful not to share his, uh, his details. And we'll go ahead and uh, have a look at what he said. So, inspection carried out on the 20th of June, 2022. Schedule of work, C1, daily records that you keep provide the evidence that you that your food safety management system is working and compliant with the above legislation, although there was a very good history of record keeping. The safer food, better business diary and cleaning schedule and temperature records had not been completed. Ensure that these reads are consistently and accurately maintained. Well, actually they are completed, but they're recorded in a diary. So we showed him that and he's, he's quite happy with that. Um, he just wants us to record temperatures in the morning as well as when we leave. But, you know, they do a visual check and they just not recorded them. So we're going to record them. No biggie. And then um, something that doesn't actually come under his remit, but he decided to include it anyway. Health and Safety at Work Act. Provide a copy of your gas safety certificate. Oh, no, this does. Sorry, this does. Um, for the kitchen, email to the address above. Yeah, that's no problem. We don't actually have one. Ours ran out um, this year, so I'll have to get some inspectors in to do that. And then this doesn't include him. Um, gas cylinders in the cellar. So he just said, oh, you need to have your gas cylinders chained up in the cellar. But I was working in there, and they're normally laid on the floor, and I'd moved them. So, uh, yeah, that is that. Anyway, um, if I just cover up his details... There we go, like that. And you can see, of course, compliance with food hygiene, hygiene safety procedures, compliance with structural requirements. Obviously, I'm guessing zero means uh, okay. And then confidence in management and control procedures, a five. So our food hygiene rating score is a five. And um, <clears throat> top marks, boys. So the issue was with it. Yeah, I don't know why they say zero. You'd have thought they'd have said five as well. Um, well, he's filled the form in, not me. So he's quite happy. And uh, 
All he wants me to do is email him a copy of the gas safety certificate. So I need to get in touch with our gas engineers who installed the pipework for us and say, can you pop back, lads, and uh, give us another gas certificate? No problem. But I'm really pleased because just a few weeks ago, I went into the kitchen and I dropped in on the chef and I said, we're going to do a mock um, food hygiene inspection. And we went through it and we improved a few things and changed a few things. And I think that has helped. We probably would have scored okay, but it definitely did not hurt to do something like that in-house. And I assume a lot of the bigger companies do it. Maybe the smaller ones don't, but I thought it would be prudent. So, yeah, inspection off the back of a very busy day kind of catches you off guard, but I guess that's what they want to do. But I'm very pleased, anyway, with the results. We can't score any better than a 5 out of 5. I'm still, of course, waiting on another subject for the paint to arrive for the drill press. I need to either repair this chuck or buy a keyless one. I think I'll probably buy a keyless chuck for it because the um, the feed ring on this is split in two. So um, it would be probably wise to replace it. Here, here it is, look. And I can't get these little uh, nodules out, so I imagine we're slightly mushroomed over on the end of these quill ends or whatever they're called. There's the thing, look, you can see it's split. That should be a single ring. So I've still got to work on that. Got to clean all the old grease up off a lot of things, tidy it all up, start putting it back together. But I can't do that until I've painted it. And I can't paint it until my paint arrives. So I'm kind of expecting it today. So what I'm going to do is carry on cleaning up all the steel work and get it ready for painting. And then we can get all of this shyster off the bench. We've also got variable frequency drive that arrived. So I'll be installing that to run this three phase motor um, with a potentiometer in place of where the on and off switch used to be. And then we're also going to stick in an on and off switch, a forward and reverse switch actually, much like this but new, and a few other bits and bobs on there. I might even put a tachometer on there so we can count the speed that the spindle's turning in, um, so we've got a visual reference when we're, when we're dialing it up and down. But that's where we are this morning. I'll see if I can grab some fo more footage later on as the day progresses. But I, at the moment, need to go upstairs and put together a schedule of works. <coughs> Sorry, sneeze moment. It is longest day of the year today, by the way. So hay fever is rife. So yeah, schedule of works for what we need to be doing today and the rest of the week. I've ordered some coconut. So we'll be making a coconut chaipier at some point in the future. Just need to have a bit of a stock take and see what we need when we need it because I don't want to be filling the cold rooms too much because space is at a premium now. And then these are racked. They look great, I think, but I do need to get something in them. So what I'm probably going to do is pull them off, put them on the floor, fill them up with boiling water again, and then I'll leave them sat there until the day comes that we want to put some big beers in them and I'm hoping I can do that next week mind you having said that I want to ferment the big beers in these tanks don't I first and then transfer into these tanks once fermentation's complete so I'll have to just rethink that and that's why I'm going to put together a schedule of work that I need to do so anyway we'll pick this up in, uh, in a few hours time boys when I've actually had a coffee and uh, got my head around it all we're a few hours further down the road, folks, and um, I've been playing around with this Jacobs 34 chuck, and I think I can get it working again. So I had a quick look at her video on YouTube, and it turns out that this nut isn't broken. It's actually a half nut, because this is machined out of one piece of metal, and in order to get the half nut on there, what they do is they, um, they cut the nut, 
they notch out a little v-groove on the front and back which you can clearly see there and then they harden it and break it in half and that's how they get it on and into into the race on this little section so Jacob's chuck only has seven pieces so you've got the main body you've got the collar you've got the half nut the two half nuts and then you've got these um, I keep calling them quills but that's wrong you call them fingers if you like and these fingers are all differently threaded if you like so they need to go back in the correct order otherwise you'll end up with um, uneven fingers gripping your drill bits and the way to tell is if you look at the top you've got just a little feathers edge of a uh, of a thread there then you've got a full thread and that one you've got no thread at all on the top of them if you can kind of see what I mean I'm sure that makes sense so then I have to figure out how am I going to get these back into the chuck which is actually quite well that one's gone in now because I've had the die grinder to it and loosened it up a touch but well, that's one in you have to make sure you go one two three put them back in in order I'm going to twist that round now and then try and wrestle the other two in and hopefully we should be able to press the um, the collar back over the top and retain hopefully retain that um, half nut in there and be able to utilize this chuck again once we've finished with the reassembly well I'm actually blown away managed to get it on pressed it in now when I took this apart I couldn't get this to wind up or down and as you can see I'm easily doing it with one hand now let's see if I can wind it all the way that's not going to work here we go what do you think so really quite simple once you get the hang of it and as you can see by the back of these I just uh, polished them up on the linisher just to take a little bit of a, a rolled over burr on there probably from where I've hit this to get it out in the first instance but I think that looks perfect everything meets up nicely just going to stick a little bit of uh, well I don't think I'm going to put any lube in it actually I think lube's going to just attract particles to stick in there so I might just leave it dry for now it's working nicely and there's resi residual oil on there so I'm going to keep that as is and this is the um, end of the shaft that should go on to so this should sit oh look at that almost cold welded itself on there I'm very pleased I think we're going to be able to make this work so I've cut out on the main body of the drill where I think we're going to need our rotary switch which will live there that's gonna go forwards and reverse so it's a two pole if you like or three three position and then this potentiometer will sit above it there and that will give us this little dial that hopefully we can use to speed up and slow down the drill the only thing I'm not sure about is how many holes I need here so I'm gonna have a, a power cable hole and then I'm thinking well this is not power cable per se this is more the output for the potentiometer and the selector switch so I'm thinking is this one needed or do I just send everything in through here and then out to the motor after it's come out of the VHD box I don't know I want to paint this so I'm gonna to have to figure out how many holes I'm gonna need beforehand because if I need to cut any more or fill any more in I need to do it now before I start to put the primer on this so this is just a bit of auto body filler 
and uh, we'll be able to sand that back no problem flush but I'm just going to go and figure out how many wires I'm going to need out of this VHD in order to make sure I've got the correct amount of holage and just like that we've got primed parts so let me just show you these two separate primers this is brushing grey primer so this is basically an anti-corrosion primer which I've put over all of the metal uh, ferrous metal based parts where it needs painting this is a contact surface so I don't want any paint on that so as you can see that's got the grey primer on there then this is a grey etch primer which just takes one coat on bare aluminums bare aluminums so we've done that on the top which is pressed aluminium that looks very nice and then the front and back housing of the motor they've got a coat on there too and they've dried really fast actually that's literally just been done so the next job will be to put on the fobco drill press cream gloss and then a couple of coats of ultra clear lacquer and we should have a bulletproof original looking fobco drill oh that's it for today though folks it's another warm one longest day of the year of course summer solstice and uh, I've got time, I believe, half past five, to go and sit in the back garden and enjoy a little bit of this sunshine. It's lovely outside. So do all the usual things. We're still, the voting's still open for the North Knots Business Awards. Do us a big, big favour. And if you haven't done it already, go into the description and pop us a vote, please, for the Brew Shed and Harrison's Brewery in each of their respective categories. And you may as well thumb up the video and subscribe because that's it, I'm off. Lights going out, and we'll see you on the next vlog. I am done. Cheers, folks. I'll see you again. Say goodbye to the tea berries. They found them. They're going to get absolutely demolished. Not that we really eat them anyway. Yeah, I think these bantams are six years old, you know, Jem. Which is some age, isn't it? And they still laid us a few eggs this year, bless them. Watch your fingers. Get the strawberries. Oh, I pulled a load up earlier on anyway and chucked them in for them. They've gone to seed, yeah. Let's see if we can just capture some footage of the bat. Whee! Right on cue. There's a bat, but also there is a cat. And the cat wants to catch the bat. But we'd rather see the bat than the cat. So I'm filming the bat. Yes, it is dark. It's coming. And it's the longest day of the year, so um, we've imbibed somewhat. I don't know what time it is. It's half past ten. Oh, oh there's the bat. Yes, I did. <laughs>